Hi, Adam here with SCP Euro. Today I'm going to be changing the water pump and the thermostat on this 2015 Volvo V60. The engine that I'm going to be doing this work on is the 2.0 Turbo, which is featured on most late model Volvos after uh, 2015. When you're changing the water pump, it's a good idea to change the coolant pipe o-ring. You will find it will be a little bit brittle and flat when you're in there. Also, because you have to take off the intake manifold, I recommend picking up a new intake uh, manifold gasket. And of course, never forget your coolant. Fortunately, we have all of this kitted together on the website ready to go. Because 2016 and before 2.0s have this thermostat with the electronic portion that can fail, we recommend changing it out before 100,000 miles just so that you can have some peace of mind that you're not going to accidentally cause a short in your electronic system. The water pump is a fairly robust design. Usually they'll last around 150,000 miles. It could last a little bit more, it could last a little bit less, but I figure there's value in showing you how to do both of these in the same video. So with that said, let's take a look at the tools that we'll need to do this job. So the tools that you're going to need doing this job are assortment of ratchets, especially with a couple assorted 10 millimeters. You will need a T25, a T30, and a T40 Torx. A few extensions never hurt. As well as some pliers for uh, different clips and uh, cable ties in there, cutter, and uh, some screwdrivers. The most important tool that you're going to actually need for this is a uh, vacuum bleeder tool. Um, this is just going to make your life easier. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very hard to get uh, bubbles out of this coolant system. Now that we've taken a look at the tools that we need, let's get started. First step is going to be to drain all of the coolant out of the car. Uh, fortunately, you don't have to take the belly pan off for this. You can just see uh, there's a nice little petcock here. And if you have a hose handy, that will make this uh, a little bit easier. Because we're going to be filling with a uh, vacuum coolant filler, I have a hose off of it right here. So this should make it a little bit easier. And of course, before doing any coolant system maintenance, make sure that the car is obviously cold. Now we're just going to close it up and uh, take that hose off and get started up top. First thing we're going to do is uh, take off this engine cover. It's a T40 Torx. This isn't really usually held on uh, too hard. And now we can see uh, we have access to some of the stuff that we're going to be working with. So up next, we're going to be uh, working to remove the uh, intake manifold. OK, in order to take the intake manifold off, in no particular order, basically this has to come off, this has to come off. There's a bolt here that holds this valve on couple electrical connectors and uh, a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. So let's do that now. So this is a T25. The screw on this bracket right here is a T30. Then remove this coolant line. It could be a little bit stuck, so you might need a little bit of uh, leverage. But be very careful because these can be pretty brittle. Just ever so slightly lever it up once it's clear of these, uh, these little snaps. There is an O-ring in here. Whenever you take something off with an O-ring, just make sure to inspect it. This one looks like it's in good shape. Remove the screen clip, kind of push on the back, and it will pop the front part off. And then kind of just lift the prongs up. So after we got that one out, there's another bolt down here that holds this bracket on. It's another T30. And we'll a little bit more difficult to get to, but not so bad. We have an extension. Now this bracket is free from the side of the manifold. So now we have an electrical connector here and a cable clip over here. So up next, you can see down here attached to the throttle body, there's the intercooler hose. Uh, it's actually a pretty easy to remove spring clip, fortunately. So I just pop that down and that is uh, effectively freed up. So now when we take the manifold off, that will just slide out of there. And just for ease of access, I'm going to remove the uh, electric water pump uh, connector right here. You just push down on it and then give it a wiggle and it'll come out. So now that you've unplugged the, the electric water pump, we could also unplug the throttle body just to get some of these wires uh, free and clear before we start taking this manifold off. Okay, now we can remove these six 10 millimeter bolts holding the manifold on. So before you remove the manifold, just be careful if there's anything sitting up top. I have uh, some mouse stuff up there. You might have nuts and stuff. 
you don't want that falling into the intake. So just be very careful and come off very slow. And if you see anything getting close to your intake ports, be sure to grab it before it falls in. Now, as you can see, we have good access to the thermostat here. Before you get started taking these bolts off, just want to make sure we got uh, something kind of covering up the intake, just in case you accidentally drop something down there. You don't want that. So to take this clip off, you just put a screwdriver up in between and you're going to pry down a little uh, tab on the bottom and it will uh, pop off. That's what you're prying down right there. So with the electrical connector off, you can take the two hoses off and then get started on our bolts. The top hose is going to be a, a spring clip that runs in this ridge. Use a screwdriver on the back side, you'll kind of see a little bit of an opening. You pop that underneath. Make sure not to lose that spring clip if, if it does pop off. It's like it's staying on. And ever so carefully pull that off. Definitely inspect the O-ring inside of this. Make sure that's in good shape. And it feels nice and soft. I think we're good here. Now we can take off the spring clamp on this. Just a normal set of pliers will do. And obviously you're gonna get uh, patches or bubbles of coolant inside, even if you drain the system, that is gonna happen. So, so with the hoses off, we can now take these T30 uh, screws out. Okay, with that last bolt removed, we can now remove the thermostat and housing. If you see any corrosion or anything on here, just wipe it off or get it nice and smooth for the new seal to make a good seal on this mating surface. This doesn't look so bad. I think we'll be good here. Now we can install the new thermostat onto the engine block. The official Volvo torque spec for these uh, T30s is a uh, 10 newton meters. Be mindful as you tighten these down that the other ones will loosen up as some get tightened as the gasket basically uh, seats down. So, With that installed, you can uh, now reinstall the electrical connector. Just make sure that it's nice and dry before plugging it in, obviously. Connect the lower hose. Make sure that this little white notch butts right up against this little white line. That means that everything is arranged and uh, oriented correctly. And now we can also install the top, top hose. Now that we have the new thermostat installed, I'm going to show you how to install the new water pump. Before I get started though, I'm going to uh, put some pieces of paper or something to block that dark crevice back there. If anything falls back there, there's a possibility that it will drop into the transmission bell housing and underneath the flex plate because that's where the starter motor goes through. So definitely make sure that you do not drop anything into that big dark hole back there because it could end up in the transmission bell housing, which would be very, very bad. Water pump's held on by these two 10 millimeters at the top and one that's kind of hard to reach on the bottom. And when that starts to get loose, a magnetic tool will be helpful to extract that just so you don't accidentally drop it. The bolt's off. All we have to do is pull this uh, connector off and then we will be able to free this pump from the engine. With the water pump off, we can see the O-ring basically that seals the pipe coming off of the engine into the water pump. So if you have a pick or something, you can go ahead and re remove that. Just make sure to not uh, scratch any of the um, landing surface. Before installing a new O-ring, you always wanna make sure everything is nice and clean. Give it a good wipe. With everything nice and cleaned up, we could fit the new O-ring into the ridge. And now we can go and install our water pump. Before I put the water pump in, I'm just gonna put this clip back in place so that it should just snap in. There's a detent here that it'll wanna sit in once it's pulled out right there. Before I install it, I'm going to move this bolt sort of into the lower position so that it'll make it a little bit easier to thread once uh, it's in there and also makes it a lot uh, less likely to drop it. So wh what I'm aiming for is this hole right down at the bottom there. Yep, all right, so, so that's threaded on the bottom. Good news, 
before completely tightening it down, obviously, I'm going to put in the top bolts too. But in the meantime, I can connect up the main hose. I did check the O-ring in there. The O-ring is fine. Definitely check the O-ring inside this uh, plastic fitting or this plastic housing before putting it back together again, just in case you find something you don't like in there. So this O-ring is seated nicely into the, the flange. And now I'm going to install the two uh, top bolts finger tight. The torque spec for those three bolts is 24 newton meters. Now that the water pump is fully installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our intake manifold and get everything buttoned up. Before installing the intake manifold, uh, now's a good time to replace the gasket and uh, make sure that the throttle body surface is also clean. While the throttle body is off the car, it's always a good time to give a, a look inside there and make sure everything looks okay. In this case it does, nice and clean. And we're ready to install. So we have this blocker in here. We can pull this out now and inspect this kind of plastic O-ring gasket in here. This basically makes the seal to the uh, throttle body. So you want to make sure that's in good shape or you can get uh, boost leaks here. Just like when you were uninstalling it, when you're reinstalling it, you want to make sure that you go slow and you don't accidentally break any of these uh, plastic pieces or connectors. The uh, connector for the throttle body goes around the outside of the throttle body, not underneath it. The throttle body is now snapped into the intercooler hose. Let me line it up. And it's on there, feels good, no movement. Doesn't feel like the gasket moved out because it looks like everything is sitting nice and flush. So we can now go ahead and tighten that down. Now we can install these six 10 millimeter bolts. And I like to install these in kind of an alternating pattern like you would a wheel while it all uh, sits down and settles onto that gasket. The official Volvo torque spec for those is 17 newton meters. There's a, a push clip for the wiring harness sort of back behind this manifold. Put that back in back there. Okay, now we can start moving all of the electrical components and connectors back into place and hooking them up. First, the electric water pump. Then the throttle body. I'm gonna reinstall this uh, bracket into the side of the intake manifold with the two T30 screws. Now we have three connections here. This one's coolant, this one's air, and then this is just a, a T25 bracket. This horribly designed clip. This one will require a little bit of wiggling while the clip sort of snaps down and into place to hold it. So, feels good. Then put in your T25 over here. Snug it up. And install this little coolant bleeder pipe onto this hose. Just be careful again, not to damage this as it goes on. There we go. That's what these two little tabs are for, so have something to leverage, push down on. Any of the electrical connections over here that we disconnected, you plug back in, they only go on uh, one way. Double check that you've made all the connections. There's no loose connectors around. Everything is tied into place. Every uh, connector feels good and solid. And then we can go ahead and cover this engine back up. And now it's time to fill it up with coolant. So we're going to be using a vacuum filler. Highly recommend to use a vacuum filler to fill a complicated cooling system like this. It'll just make sure that you don't have any bubbles in it. And uh, that's what the dealers use. So if you don't have a vacuum filler, or if you don't have an air compressor, uh, find somebody that does. Uh, it's, it's completely worth it to fill your coolant this way. So today we're using genuine Volvo coolant uh, for the price, pretty much can't be beat. Uh, and it's a, this is a concentrate, so we're going to use a 50-50 mix uh, going into the car. So that means we're going to need 50% uh, distilled water, 50% uh, concentrated coolant. So what I like to do is just take uh, half a gallon, this is also a gallon, take a half a gallon of water, empty it. All right, so I have the vacuum filler tool almost hooked up. Here's my air line. You need a sizable compressor. Um, basically, I want to make sure that I have eyes on a uh, coolant hose because I'm going to basically observe 
until they collapse a little bit, and that's how I know that the, uh, the whole coolant system is under vacuum. I also want to make sure that the valve is closed here. The other end of the line is in uh, your coolant. Now I'm able to build a little bit of vacuum. So right around 15 is going to be fine. And then open up the system. Just make sure you hold it in place. You'll see the uh, coolant hoses all start to expand. And you can see the, the draining uh, is actually going pretty quick. Okay, it looks like it stopped. Let me check the level. So you can see these have a cone that's supposed to seal. You want this to seal below this ridge because if you look, there's actually a hole right here. And that actually goes to the outside of this reservoir. So if you're sealing on this ridge with this cone around here, then you will not be able to draw a vacuum. You'll be trying and trying and it'll just keep sucking air up through there. So make sure that the cone seals uh, below here if you're using a vacuum filler. So that's how you replace the water pump, thermostat, or both on a 2.0 Volvo engine. As you can see, it's not that big of a job, something you could definitely do on your own, uh, in your driveway with minimal tools. I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, leave a like or a comment below if you have a question. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, stay tuned for more Volvo content.